Let's say that you were in a lecture the other day and your lecturer was talking about torque, this idea of um, work and power and movement inside a car. The words torque, T-O-R-Q-U-E. You understood most of the lecture, but there were bits and pieces that were a bit difficult, so you decide to go to your textbook in order to find out more information. It may automotive mechanics. It's a good place to start. But it's a big book, so how do you find out information about talk? There's three things that you need to do with the textbook. The first is to have a purpose for reading. As I said, it's a big book, so you could start at the beginning and work your way through, but that's going to take you ages and be pretty boring. So what you need to do is to look at the maps that the book gives you. The first is at the front, it's called the contents, and this gives you a broad overview of what the book is about and the different subject areas that are covered. At the back, there's a much more detailed map called the index, and this is ordered alphabetically. So they start with A, go through B, C, and so on. And if you look under T, you'll find the word talk there. Next to it are two numbers, page 137 and 141. So if you look at page 137, you'll find that there is information about talk in engines on that page. Once you get to the page, there's various things you can do and various ways in which the writer is trying to help you read this. First of all, there's the chapter heading, Engine Measurement and Performance. Then he gives you an overview of the different topics that are in the, in the chapter. There's headings, there's different colours. There are also diagrams. Now, if you look at the first one on page 136, you'll see there figure 9.1. This relates to information in the text around figure 9.1 and different things that are happening in a piston in a car engine. One of the important things that you need to make use of in the textbook that you've got and in many textbooks is that at the end of the chapter there will be review questions. This helps you to look back and uh, think about what you've read and just check to make sure that you understand what's been talked about and that you know what they mean by certain things. A lot of the words that they use in the textbook may be quite new, and so in this case we've got words like force and work and power, horsepower, energy and torque, which may be new to you and may be new to you in this particular setting. At the back of the textbook, just before the index, is a glossary. Now, a glossary is really just a mini dictionary which concentrates on words that you'll find in this particular textbook. So if you look at the glossary here, all those words for force and work and talk are given definitions in, in the glossary. The last thing that you have to do if you are reading the textbook is uh, think about the information that you are going to use. If you are going to use material and words and information from the textbook, then you need to tell the person who's reading what you're writing where that information came from. This is called referencing and may be covered in other lectures and other classes by your teachers. But essentially there are four things that you need to answer when you're doing referencing. The first is who, that is who wrote it, in this case it's Ed May. The second is what, what did he write? He wrote Automotive Mechanics, that's the title of the book. Volume 2. The third thing you need to talk about is when, that is when it was written, and if you look over to the second page here, you'll see there that it was written in 2000. And the fourth thing is where, that is where it was published and produced, and it was produced by a company called McGraw-Hill in Australia. So to sum up, the four things that you need to do when you are reading a textbook and to find information quickly and easily is a a purpose for reading so you need to have a reason for going into the textbook and for reading it you need to be able to find the information quickly and that means using the two maps the contents and the index pages you need to be able to find your way around the page and the paragraphs and the chapters and this uh, you can be helped in this by the headings and the pictures and the diagrams you can also make use of the glossary to help you understand words that are unfamiliar to you. And the fourth thing that you can do is when you come to use the information in the textbook to reference it and to tell the reader where you got it from.